Well, guess what? It's the first weekend of May. Finally have all the parts here to continue on this shower and install in this old mobile home. So, here's what I've been doing so far. I've not been doing much. I had to run to the parts store, get some screws. But as you can see, I've taken out the faucet, that whole board and everything that was right there. I might try to reuse that stuff as far as the, the wood. I'm not sure. They bought a new faucet also, so I'll be putting in a new shower head. So what I plan on doing right here is I'm going to take this little piece of wood out, and I'm going to frame up this whole opening with 2x4, okay? Just make it nice and gooder. Then I'm going to take 2x4, frame along the bottom here. I'm going to have to cut these wall studs out to get the rut, the rod off of it and then figure out how I'm going to piece that together and then build over here. I pulled all the nails out of the 2x4s or the 2 by which are sizes, 2x3 <laughs> or whatever. Uh, I got those nails out and I just kind of roughed in some 2x4s on the boundaries here and uh, I'm trying to get a game plan. I'm going to end up running another 2x4 from here up to the ceiling. I'm going to come across and do another one coming down. So that'd be good there. And even though I can, I've cut these and I can kind of toenail them in, I think I'm going to cut some small pieces of two by four. And I'm going to sandwich each one, I guess, from about here down on each side. I can tie into it and then have plenty to toenail down into. Um, that's probably completely unnecessary, but... You know to me it kind of works you know maybe maybe it to give it a little more strength to the wall i don't know i don't know you guys know i really don't have a game plan on how i do stuff i try to do it good it might not be the way a lot of other people would do it but you know it is what it is i ain't got no rules <laughs> just my way so okay let's get back after it four o'clock now and i want to show you guys what all i've done so i've got this right here framed in all the way across the bottom and this is how i decide to tie in the old walls so i've got the bottom two by four anchored to the floor and the two by ten outside you know the the header the oh shoot i don't know the word Trust me, there's a 2x10 going this way underneath the floor. <laughs> so it's anchored in there and into the floor. And then I cut these pieces and put them in between the wall joists here. And they're not equal. Some of these are 14 on center. And this one here is like 14 and a half. That one over there is different. And what I did is I put these pieces, anchored them to the bottom 2x4, and then I shot, I toe nailed it this way on both sides all the way across. And this wall right here is, well, you can't tell, but anyway, this wall ain't going no damn place. And so I did two by four on the bottom here, and I just framed up this hole. The wall is a lot stronger now. And the next phase is I think I'm going to go ahead and start roughing in where I'm going to put the shower basin and see what I got to do to get that to fit. So so far everything's going along pretty smooth and again i must say these people here do not sponsor the channel at all but these are the best screws out there they are wonderful they go in easy they come out easy you don't have to worry about stripping them out super grade a excellent quality and they're actually made in taiwan I don't care if stuff's made Taiwan. They make good stuff. So, anyways. It is another Saturday morning. Back down here at the old mobile home. And I'm just brainstorming. And I've got a word of advice to any of you other people out there that... They have an older mobile home or you're wanting to do a bathroom renovation. If you're going... There's some things you can save money on and try to come up with a cheap solution and there's some things you should just spend the money in the first place and get exactly what you need 
and this is an example the shower basin this is a solid surface shower basin meant for putting it straight on the subfloor what I'm having to do is I'm sure you all have said or I've, you all have seen is that now I have to build a platform or build something that this can rest on to where the drain matches up with the tub because the P-trap is actually above the floor now yeah I could cut up all the plumbing and make it go through the floor but that would just be so wretched I would hate that such a pain in the butt and I'm just not going to do it because it would involve cutting the vent pipe and doing the sink drain and the drain from the kitchen and all kinds of stuff plumbing that goes below the floor where all this stuff ties into is in a big knot you know it's real condensed and yeah so they make a shower basin for this application for mobile homes or for places where your p-trap is above the floor they're considerably a lot more expensive they're like six hundred dollars but it's a drop-in plug-and-play situation and you're done um yeah spend the money if you want to do something like this and get the right shower basin instead of trying to cobble it together and, and make things work it's just a pain in the butt man um and I understand people want to save money. Cool. I get it. I totally get it. But this is one of those things where you should just spend the money. Because once this is done, I mean, it's... Yes, I'm bitching. <laughs> I'm just totally bitching. So, anyways. Yeah. So there's the P-trap. And what sucks is if they ever have to empty out the p-trap for the shower it's going to be pinched in between the floor and the shower basin so they would have to cut a hole in the floor underneath the p-trap so they could remove it it's dumb man and then it's so tight i don't even know if you see that black pipe it's right up against the trailer chassis right up against the bottom of the floor i mean it's just so jammed in there where there's no wiggle room to do any cutting in my view you know as far as adding another p-trap or tying in all the other pipes it would just be a hot mess yeah it's gonna suck like i said i'm not a plumber i'm just a marty <laughs> so uh goodness sakes hey, peeps it is sunday morning and wow i'm about run that cabinet right into my eyeball <laughs> so <clears throat> here's the progress so far now the basin is here this is just the test fit i'm trying to find exactly the heights where i need to be and i'm pretty sure i'm almost where i need to be i need to get some shims because i need to just bring it up just a hair to get everything squared away i've had, had to bring this wall section in here right here in an inch and a half you see where I cut out the loo on so I could scoot it because I was way too far out. Because this is actually more narrow than the factory tub. So that was an issue. Had to take that wall all apart and rebuild it again. Get away, B. I will smack the dog poop out of you. So anyway, had to bring that in inch and a half. Add these supports on the end. Um, yeah, there's some, uh, something else I did. I can't remember. It's just a bunch. Of, uh, excuse me. It's just been a bunch of sitting and figuring because the drain, I decided that I'm going to end up having to put a spacer in the drain pipe to bring the drain out more. And I have to go get the actual drain from the home depot. So this sits underneath the tub like that, okay? Where it's hooked up now, this is about that far in. I need to be out here. So I'm going to have to extend that. And I figured that would be the easiest way to do it. <clears throat> so, as you can see, here are my supports underneath the feet for the tub. And also, I'm going to get a, I think I can do it with a 2x6. And run that 2x6 along the front here, which would give it kind of a step, which I know will suck. But, 
I want something to support that edge of the tub like that. Pretend that's a full two by six. And uh, I'll anchor it in so I have to give the very front some support if you, in case you step here. <clears throat> you know, the, the edge will be screwed in this two by four here. And I'm probably gonna add some extra two by fours in between the joists. So that way I can probably screw ever, you know, 12 inches or so. Uh, Cause these are like 14 inches. You know, I think it should just have more than three or four, maybe put six in it. And then I'll have to attach this. But I really can't do nothing else until I get the drain situated because I need to know my drain is right before I finalize everything. So that's kind of where I'm at. Now, there is a tub surround that goes in here, but they want to keep the window. So that's going to, I'm already going to have to cut the tub surround down because this is an eight foot ceiling. And that surround is four and eight foot wall. I believe I know it don't fit put it that way so after this is in I get the drain hooked up I'm gonna do the faucets make sure all that stuff works make sure it's completely functional and it drains the way it should then I'm gonna start worrying about this but like I said it's just a lot of measuring and going back and double checking and just looking at everything make sure I'm not royally screwing this to hell up so that's where I'm at. So, anyways, that's it for this video, guys. Like and subscribe. Leave comments below, and I'll see you later.